Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So last week, Microsoft released the 2025 Wave 1 release notes, and I'm super excited about it. So just like I did prior with other release notes, I'm going to do a series of articles about these release notes. And I'm going to start with what's new for Dynamics 365 sales. Now, I'm sure everybody now knows about agents and co-pilots, and it's a very exciting thing that is happening everywhere. So you'll also notice that even though the release notes say that there's a lot of content related to lead management tools, the main one here that I'm going to talk about, and that's in the release notes for Dynamics V65 sales, is the new sales qualification agents. And you're probably going to say, wait a minute, I've heard that before. That is correct, because there was already mention of this agent back in 2024 release wave two. That's kind of where it started, but it seems like this functionality has now been pushed to this 2025 wave one. So what you'll see here is the sales qualification agent that is actually a combination of three different agents. And I'm gonna get into detail on what those are. Now, I don't think we're gonna see three different agents. What I think is that those three different agents will be used by the sales qualification agents as skills. So they're gonna be part of that sales qualification agent. Now, if you're not sure about exactly what is it, right? What does it do? Let me go ahead and talk to you about that exactly. So this sales qualification agent is a custom, right? Microsoft built it. We didn't build it, Microsoft built it, but it's a custom autonomous agent that lives inside of Dynamics 365 sales. That's where it sits, right? On the lead section there. And its purpose is really to automate and streamline the sales qualification process. So it's gonna do that by providing sellers with a really good quality pipeline, right? So you're gonna see a lot of leads that are gonna go through different things that the three different agents are going to do. And at the end of that, our sellers are going to have a really great lead uh, pipeline, all qualified leads that, you know, we want to pursue and everything, right? The other thing it's, it's going to do, how is it going to get there, right? It's going to actually enrich these leads. It's going to prioritize these leads so the sellers know what to work on. And then it's also going to assist sellers with personal email communications to those leads as well. Now, once you see that sales qualification agent, and you can see it right here, you can see that there's a ton of information on there, right? Sellers don't even have to open any leads on that seller from, I should say, that um, sales qualification agent. You can see there's a ton of information from the seller right up front. So they're gonna be able to see their total target amount, right, for each individual seller. They're also gonna be able to see the percentage that they have completed so far of that sales goal, right, that target. Then you also see certain sections on there that show uh, sales forecasting details. So you're gonna be able to see all the different buckets, right, of those sale forca sales forecasts that are configured and then also the estimated revenue amounts as well. And again, the main thing here is that it's going to go through these leads and it's gonna find the key leads that we want these sellers to focus on. Now, boosting a pipeline is really about, right? like I said earlier, really going after the leads that have the highest probability to end up in a win, right? We're gonna sell something to those leads. So the first agent that I wanna mention, right, of those three, three agents that that qualification agent is made up out of is the research agent. And the name already kind of says that, right? So the research agent does exactly that. It's going to do uh, research on leads. It's going to also enrich the lead with the research that it's doing. Now you're going to say, okay, well, what is it going to research? What is it going to use for that? Well, it is AI, right? So it's going to use its AI skills to look at data and collect data, I should say, from multiple sources, right? So it's looking at your Dynamics 365 sales. It's looking uh, at email communication, past email communications maybe as well, right? It's looking at public websites. It's looking at industry reports. Uh, 
uh, maybe also data from third parties. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe we can connect to third parties and get some information from there as well. Think about a LinkedIn or something like that, right? That's what my guess is on that. But what it does then, it uses all that data that it found and it's going to, again, enrich that profile of that lead, really giving the sellers that full 360 view, right? So there's gonna be other information on there as well, like the leads, finances, their strategic priorities, the challenges and all sorts of things. But again, really helping with getting that data into that lead, right? So that we don't have to do that manually anymore, right? It's really saving those sellers a lot of time because they don't have to do the research. And then they also don't have to do the data entry. So again, saving them a lot of time, allowing them to focus on what is most important and that's actually selling. Then there's also other things that this agent can handle. It actually handles email validation. So we know for sure that it's a valid email address. Uh, also, it makes sure that the lead actually is opted in to receive emails from us, from our sellers and phone calls, right? We want to make sure that we're not calling people that don't want us to call them. And the other thing it does is if this is applicable, then the agent will also give our seller suggestions of other folks at this particular lead company to reach out to, right? So that they don't have to, again, do that by themselves. Uh, some other functionality, we already seen who knows whom, right? So those are sellers at your organization that already have a relationship at that lead firm, maybe even at the, with the lead or maybe with a contact at that company. But this is also something that this agent looks at and then make sure that the seller knows about that as well. And this is very beneficial because this is allowing us our sellers to do that introduction, to make that a warm introduction, right? And that's usually more successful, obviously, than a cold introduction. And that's why this is also very important as well. So other things that the sales qualification agent can do is actually recognize content from emails, right? So for example, if there's an email that comes into the seller's mailbox that is really related to a support issue, the agent can actually understand that intent and then it can also make sure that it goes somewhere else where somebody is supposed to be taking care of support. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but again, autonomous agents can do a lot, right? So I'm really curious to see how this is going to, uh, to work. And then also if there's a response from a lead where they're saying like, oh, you know what, I'm really not interested, please stop bothering me. The lead can also understand that and then it could uh, set the lead to be no longer qualified, right? It can just close that lead as disqualified based on right those low interest types of signals. Also very, very important. Then we have the engagement agent and this really helps with the lead communication. So think about the emails that are being sent from the seller to the lead, right? It could really help with that, putting those emails, that content together, taking a look at the tone that those emails are being written with, right? To make sure that it's the same tone that the seller uses in its communications so that nobody knows that this is an AI uh, communicating with those leads. And the thing that is really important as well is that the seller can actually choose for the agent to dynamically respond after the first email sent. So what that means is the agent is going to have that conversation with your lead for you. You're not gonna have to do that manually. The agent will do that for you. And of course, the content of those follow-up emails that that agent will create will be based off of the lead responses, right? Which is logical. Now, the other thing that it can detect is out of office messages. And this is very important as well because you don't want to continuously keep sending emails as long as that lead is out of the office, right? So very important feature uh, there as well. And then lastly, it could also schedule meetings. So what it will do is it can propose time slots to your leads and giving those time slots right from the seller's calendar. It has access to that so it can see when the seller is free and then send those times, those time slots to the leads so they can pick a date and a time. 
Now, there's also other things that the agent does here as well. So for example, it could expand your lead pipeline by looking at historical data from Dynamics 365 customer service. So if you are an organization that doesn't just use Dynamics 365 sales, but you're also using Dynamics 365 customer service, then this is a very important feature for you. So what it does is it actually looks at the case history. It looks at your case records, right? And then it's going to say like, hey, you know what? This might actually be a good upsell opportunity, right? So think about maybe you have a customer in your system and they have a bunch of cases going on, maybe about a coffee maker that's not working correctly. There's a lot of issues with it. So then it could actually say, hey, maybe I'm gonna create a new lead to pitch to this company, to this lead, uh, yeah, to this organization, customer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe we want to pitch this upgraded model of coffee machine, right? So we can do things like that as well. And this is very important because again, a lot of organizations um, within, you can see that the sales departments and the customer service departments, usually they don't, they're, they're very disconnected. They don't talk to each other, right? So there's a lot of potential sales that are actually lost because there is no communication there. I'm really hoping that for people who are not using Dynamics 365 uh, customer service, I'm hoping that there's gonna be a connector for other applications, other customer service applications, like Salesforce and Zendesk and ServiceNow, right? Just naming a few so that we can also kind of bring those in again for people who are not using Dynamics 365 customer service. But if that's going to happen, I don't know. My guess is as good as yours. And then, of course, there is no sales organization that's the same. And therefore, we need to be able to uh, configure this sales qualification agent. And we actually are going to be able to do that. So we're going to be able to provide company details and we can do that by entering in our company website or websites. Maybe we have multiple websites, right? That Copilot can then use. And we can also put in a description of the products and the services that we offer so that again, Copilot is grounded in that data, in that company data, and it's going to be more effective. We can also define criteria for our ideal customers, right? So these are the customer base that we're gonna go after. Those could be like specific industries that a seller goes after, right? Or uh, specific job titles, maybe only C level or above, right? We can configure these types of things as well. Company locations, right? Um, those are things that we can put in there as well. And the nice thing is that this really helps fine tune that prioritization criteria as well. Nice thing also is what I saw on the screenshot that you see over here right now is that you can actually point some of those things to dataverse columns as well, right? So that it really knows what it's supposed to be looking at when we're uh, entering those types of things of information. So what do you think? I really, really, I'm super excited about this. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. Would love to know what you guys are thinking, leave your comments, please let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.